Hey, you all, and good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the West. More specifically, we are in Kansas City, Missouri. I left uh, St. Louis yesterday after uh, visiting the uh, Union Station Aquarium decided to uh, drive across the state and made my way to uh, Kansas City. Um, and I'm gonna continue driving today I um, actually headed out to Colorado. My sister had a baby and uh, wanted to go out and meet the new baby. Uh, my mom's out there. Uh, Jen and Annabelle flew out there. They're already out there, so I'm a little late to the party. But I'm uh, making my, hopefully we're gonna make it tonight. I'm gonna try to drive through, uh, maybe show up late tonight in, uh, in Colorado. But uh, before we left, uh, before we left, Kansas City before we left the state of Missouri there is something I wanted to check out and that is the National Toy and Miniature Museum here in uh, in Kansas City Missouri um, I'm, I'm not that familiar I saw I saw this was there I think that looks like something interesting to check out is a both a museum of miniatures and toys I guess a lot of toys are miniature versions of other things so always up for a good toy museum so we'll check this out and then we'll get back on that long lonesome road so please follow me see the simple t-m there at the top stands for toys and miniatures all right so this looks like a lot of fun this is over 20,000 fine scale miniatures as well as 51,000 toys. Oh my goodness. So it looks like we start here with the miniatures. Okay, see the table and uh, chair there. And then we see a miniature version of that same table and chair. Yeah, look at this. You can actually take a magnifying glass with you to help you see the uh, miniatures. You know, helps you see them because, you know, they're so small. Hey, look at this here. I really like this. This is a violin, but inside the violin, you have a violin shop built there inside the, uh, inside the violin. See all the miniature furniture there. I remember as a kid just be always being fascinated by like the dollhouse furniture. It's the tiny yet uh, surprisingly accurate furniture that you'd see in dollhouses. You can see the teeny tiny glassware that uh, dolls would drink out of. Look at that. Little tiny glass animals there. It's a dollhouse rendition of the Russian Embassy which is interesting and yeah look at all look at all the uh, pieces in here little doll there with all her uh, all her items and looking at herself in the mirror there with her hat collection it's a collection of guns and knives maybe a game hunters collection a leopard skin rug there. You can see this large dollhouse in the middle where you can see all the all those items put to work. Just amazing when you think about how much goes into setting up a dollhouse. How many individual little pieces are in there. See the making of miniatures here. See about how they're actually made. And here in the artist studio, you can actually try your hand at making miniatures. See if you have what it takes. And uh, I'll tell you right now, I don't. I don't have what it takes. My, I have uh, limited fine motor skills. And uh, but uh, but well, not. Let's give it. A, let's give it a shot, anyways. You have to. Here's the clock. There, you got to pick up the hands of the clock and put them on there. I guess you can use this magnifying glass to help. Let's see if I can do this. So I got my tweezers there. And you got the the clock hands. These are so small. Oh, okay. I got one. Alright. 
Take a little Dremel tool. Oh, 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 I almost got it. Use these silicone wheels <coughs> with this is like the world's ruckus game of operation. I threaded one. Oh, wow. I actually got it. Can you see there? I got one of the hands on the clock. I'm actually shocked by, by that. I thought I would be able to get zero. Like these miniature animals. Here, a little miniature peacock. Little tiny birds in cages. Some really fun stuff here. You can see a bullfight occurring underneath a wine glass. And we have an entire chess set inside of a chess piece there. Look at that little flower. Flower with fairies on it on the end of a uh, tube of lipstick. Are the micro curiosities. These are the smallest of the small where you actually need microscopes to be able to see them. Let's see, uh, peek down in there. What is that? I don't even, I don't even know what we're looking at. Let's see, what do you see in the microscope? Look at this flap. Oh, they're paintings, paintings on pinheads. Can you guys see those? They're really tiny, even in the microscope. And here's a classic. There is uh, dressed fleas. These are actual fleas with clothes on. See little fleas there down there at the end. You can barely see them. A yeah, very impressive collection of dollhouses here. See the cottage there. And this massive dollhouse back this way. Oh no, to have a maze. The miniature maze. I guess we wander through the maze and while we're while we're lost, we can enjoy the little little miniature tableaus in here. Look at this. This is like a uh, full art museum here. Walk down the hallway and appreciate the art. There's an art deco jewelry store in there. Yeah, that's very interesting. So we leave the miniature section. I guess we gotta head upstairs for the toy section. And this is pretty amazing. This giant uh, structure here, this rotating tornado of toys here. Oh, look at there, there's Candyland. I remember when I was a kid playing Candyland, I actually thought that uh, it was a game of skill. Turns out that uh, it's basically the board game equivalent of flipping a coin bingo cards there, the snake, the farm down here. Oh yeah, look how tall this tornado is, or toy nato, if you will. So that guy trying to box a uh, kangaroo. We wind ourselves up these stairs here to check out the toy section. I really love the designs they have in here. How they've incorporated the toys together. Look at those Pez dispenser, Pez dispenser sculptures there. So here is the dolls and dollhouse sections. I don't know what separates a toy dollhouse from a miniature. Is it just who owns it? If it's owned by a child, it's a uh, it's a toy, and if it's owned by an adult, it's a miniature. Now look at that, this is really big. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. I can't even see that peeking out the window. I see the little doll face looking at us. Here's some of the uh, different dollhouses through the years. This is the 1950s era dollhouses. They're to be uh, made of tin. <laughs> Oh, this is, I remember this, or these style, these are uh, the little people there. And uh, down here we got the massive, sprawling Barbie dream house. This is Barbie's Magical Mansion, 1990. Wow, what does is, what is Ken call the, uh, the Barbie dream house? The uh, Mojo Dojo Casa House, I believe. Over here is the doll section. We can appreciate some of the uh, 
dolls throughout the ages. You know, I wonder if they check and make sure that uh, that none of these dolls are haunted before they put them in the museum. Now you kind of see the inner workings of the doll there. Now over here, we see some of the figures that you would find in doll houses. So I guess these are the, the dolls that are in doll houses. Oh, look at, the, look at the dunce. The dunce there and his, his little dunce hat. Out down here, you have these, uh, these busts. You guys have these little different doll heads. Maybe this would be like a display for uh, for different doll heads for doll making and look at that look at that tiny dog that is a very very tiny dog and look at this this collection of toys it's amazing <laughs> love the space robots here talks here about the mid-century view of the future and I, I really do love this aesthetic the uh, the look at a future that uh, that never showed up kind of a future that has become the past that never actually became the future. I'm looking at this guy over here. I don't know if I'm just manufacturing this memory in my skull, but did I have this guy? He's got the screen on him. I was wondering, does the screen play a movie while he's walking? I'm maybe just making this up, I don't know, but he just, I just got a twinge of memory in the back of my head. If anyone knows what this guy does, leave a comment in the comment section. For some reason, I was draw drawn to this guy here. But, uh, yeah, the wonderful robots, and then these uh, space space tanks here. Look at that space truck being driven by a robot. A little astronaut there. Yeah, these are really, really cool. Oh, look at the flying saucers spacemen in them. Now this, uh, this is what I grew up on. This is Masters of the Universe. I always referred to them as He-Man when I was a kid, but the proper name was Masters of the Universe. Yeah, I loved, I loved these guys. And my mom told me to quit bringing up the story about her throwing them away, so I won't bring up that story. <laughs> yeah, all the, all the different versions of He-Man. I, I remember my dad telling me that I would always, he would always take me to the store and ask me which man I wanted. And he said, I always pick out the scariest, weirdest looking guy. So I always liked the villains because I think I just liked the design of monsters. I had the good guys, but um, I had more villains. So I always liked the, and I, I have, like, some of these I had, I had, uh, I had Moss Man there. I think this guy's called Stinkor the skunk, and I had all three of these in the back. The guy with the telescope eyes, the suctioning guy, and the furry guy there. Oh man, yeah, such good memories. Had this uh, this lobster man over here too, I forget his name. And um, I think I had both of the castles there. You had Castle Grayskull there, and I think this is Snake Mountain, and uh, I remember that right there. The top is actually a microphone that you can talk to and make that skull face talk. See the Mexican folk dolls here. I really love these. It's our Fisher Price Adventure people. I don't think I remember adventure people. Looks like they're going on some aquatic adventures there. I do like the guy in the old timey scuba suit. What does it say about my life that this is the second time I've seen a Marvel exhibit in a museum this week? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, oddly, I know, oddly beautiful. The marbles here. And uh, yeah, look at that hand there, ready to, ready to flick that marble. Here are promotional toys, or mascots. Of course, me and Jen, both fans of mascots, especially, you know, more unusual mascots. But yeah, you know, I recognize most of these. There's Sprout for the Jolly Green Giant, the Keebler Elves, the Pillsbury Doughboy. Um, I'm not as familiar with the Cottonelle Dog, 
Um, doesn't Cottonelle normally, <laughs> don't they normally have the, the, the bear family that wipes their butt? I think so. And uh, okay, like a Briscoe pretzel man of some sort. Yeah, Mr. Peanut Big Boy there. And uh, the Burger King King. Uh, I, like, I like this guy here. He's just a happy, happy loaf of Wonder Bread. And then the, uh, the mascot for Idaho Potatoes. <laughs> it's the Serta Mattress Sheep on there. And uh, who's this hot dog? That's well, it's a ballpark hot dog mascot. And uh, oh, there's the Wienermobile. The Wienermobile there. I saw the, uh, I saw one of the actual Wienermobiles a few days back. These tin airplanes here. And oh, look at this. This is fitting. We have the Transworld Airlines. <laughs> of course, it just came from the Transworld uh, Halloween and Attraction Show. So, uh, rather fitting. Also, this one uh, really caught my eye here. It's a Boeing 747, but look at they made the, the top see-through, so you can actually see the inside of the cabin. Some notable toys in this section. So this is uh, varieties of baby doll. And uh, over here, these are classic. The uh, Kenner line of Star Wars figures. These were uh, so popular when they came out, they actually had to had to sell uh, cardboard cutouts that you could claim later. Uh, um, so kids would be able kids would open their Christmas present on Christmas morning, and it would be a cardboard cutout. And then later, when the, the action figures came out, they could trade it in for uh, for the figures. So yeah, imagining opening up Christmas morning and getting a piece of cardboard for Christmas. Anyone out there that actually actually happened to? I think I was just a little too young for that, but it would have happened to me if I was a few years older. And look at this, the uh, speak and spell. Now, at my mom's house, she still has the speak and spell that uh, me and my little sister used when we were kids, and it still works perfectly. This thing is built like an absolute tank. So here we have the toys separated into decades see the different themes there. Back in the 1960s, of course, you have weird space robots. 1960s, you have a little family there. A little 60s family with the Viewmaster. Big fan of the Viewmaster. The 70s, we've got Rocky and Bullwinkle and Star Wars. Now, the 80s, that would have been uh, my generation of toys. The, the Hulk Hogan figure there. And the 1990s, I think that's without a street shark and a troll doll. And then the 2000s, okay, I remember, this was a craze, I can't remember their name, but these little hamsters would like run around your house and like be alive. And I remember someone telling me that, the, that months later they found one of these hamsters like behind their fridge, and as they put it, it was still alive. <laughs> there is Howdy Doody and his friends there, the marionettes, and uh, Zippy the monkey. Zippy the monkey. Love the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head there. Those are some of the original versions. I think the original original, you actually used a real potato that you stuck uh, the uh, accoutrements into. But I think they maybe decided that kids shouldn't be playing with rotting food. So uh, they, they started developing their own potato that you could stick things in. Yeah, this is the 60s era, but I remember some of these toys were still popular when I was a kid. Like a mouse trap. I remember I wanted this mouse trap more than anything. I was absolutely obsessed with it. I don't even think I ever even played the game. I would just set it up and let the mouse trap go. And of course the Rock'em Sock'em robots there. And I remember these these racetracks when we were kids. We, me and the other kids would get in arguments. We would take these orange strips and we would whip each other with them. It's incredibly painful to be whipped by one of these racetracks. Check out Mr. Machine, the robot there. That was a big part of my childhood too, was Legos. I loved the uh, the Knights and the Pirates were my favorite. There again, the uh, Star Wars toys here in the 70s section. But uh, what every 70s child wants the most is Farrah Fawcett's disembodied head. 
superheroes here are pretty fun. Look at Batman there. Well, I guess that's 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 uh, the Falcon. So he's the first African American superhero. These are World War One era toys here. I don't know if that is a knockoff Mickey or if that's just what Mickey used to look like. <laughs> also got the uh, seven dwarves down there. Oh, here's something. I think we've all heard about from the uh, Christmas Story movie, the Little Orphan Annie uh, telematic decoder pin, or I guess you would listen in to the radio show and use the pin to decode secret messages. Here's a replica of the pin and how it worked, how it you matched up numbers with letters. And there's a very cool vintage space blaster. These are dolls based on world events here. I guess this is Roosevelt's Africa trip. So I guess that is the Teddy Roosevelt doll. And these are the uh, people and animals he met in Africa. These classic science kits. I remember sometimes uh, it would actually contain dangerous chemicals. <laughs> Says uh, it's boric acid. Yeah, that seems dangerous. I know I've heard stories of, uh, of the science kits actually having uranium in them. I don't know if that's just an urban legend, but it's something I've heard. Some tiddlywinks, some jacks there, <laughs> and uh, this little shooting gallery. Although I don't know if you should be shooting uh, shooting dogs, children, and police officers. It's a German Noah's Ark there. See the line of animals, two by two, lining up to get inside the ark. This is Sunday toys, I guess, religious toys like the nun there. And um, this is outrageous toys. Talks about some of the toys that would now be considered inappropriate, such as this uh, this animatronic wino here would actually drink liquor and smoke his cigar. Talks about uh, drinking and smoking no longer considered appropriate in uh, children's toys. It's probably not considered appropriate, appropriate by modern standards either. Well, one interesting aspect to the museum here, they actually will have toys um, on display. This is Tiny Tears, and then they'll actually have a, some writing by the owner of the toy. This is Anne Smiley. She owned Tiny Tears here. I think of some of her memories of the toy. Oh, well, notice there's a keyhole there. Let's take a peek. Is this what's going on in there? Oh, okay. It's the little dollhouse seat inside. Yeah, here's a display on Mabel Dixon's teddy bear. You see uh, Mabel there holding the bear with her cat. And there she is as a little girl with her teddy bear. So much beloved item. I think that's a really amazing way to display toys. You know, we, these inanimate objects, but you know, we have these strong connections to them. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's really amazing uh, to kind of bring that aspect to the forefront. Yeah, this is uh, Eugene Coulter's teddy bear. It says that uh, he received this when his parents died back in the, uh, in the 20s. And uh, it said when Eugene passed away himself, he had his uh, had his bear with him. Yeah, this is the teddy bear section. Of course, tells the story of how Teddy Roosevelt inspired the teddy bear and all the different uh, types of teddy bears over the years. We got Smokey the bear, we got Winnie the Pooh, we got Yogi Bear, Paddington Bear, and Fozzie Bear. And here's everyone's favorite uh, <laughs> new doll. That is uh, Alan. It was featured in the Barbie movie. And uh, it's become kind of a cult classic after his original doll was discontinued. And uh, over here is a G.I. Joe. Of course, a G.I. Joe originally the same size as Barbie, but uh, over time he shrunk. And I was, uh, I was really into video games. As a, as a young child, I'm receiving, receiving the NES for my birthday and just being absolutely fixated on it. And then uh, later, 
we get both a Sega Genesis and a Super Nintendo. I don't see the Super Nintendo here, but um, I had both, but I was really at heart. I was a, I was a Sega guy. I really loved Sonic the Hedgehog and, uh, and the games that they had for the Genesis. And then, uh, yeah, I remember when the, um, when the PlayStation came out. That's kind of when I, kind of when I separated from, uh, from video games. Kind of when I started to, uh, to lose my interest. And oh my gosh, just another just random memory flashing back. See the Captain Crunch there. And this night here. Oh my god, I'm trying to remember what that's from. Is that from Captain Crunch? For some reason I remember them like being I don't know if they're in the cereal box. I think this is one where you had to like mail away. You get by the cereal, you mail the pre proof of purchase in, and then they'll send you that figure. I remember getting fixated on weird stuff like that as a as a kid. Oh, there's the the real Ghostbusters. I re yeah, I remember these were super popular. I remember getting the the cartoon had it's like its own thing. The cartoon was super weird, and I was like at times it was like really scary too for kids. I remember like getting upset watching the Ghostbuster cartoons because there was just some really really intense stuff. Believe it or not. The uh, California Raisins, another one of my absolute fixations. I remember you'd get them at Hardee's, and um, I didn't, you know, my family didn't even eat at Hardee's, and I made my family eat at Hardee's so we could collect the California Raisins. And to this day, I have no earthly idea what my fixation was, why I wanted them all, why I loved them so much. Like, I don't even understand. I mean, they're pretty cool, like little raisins playing instruments, but the level of obsession I had with um, collecting these it was was beyond reason. Here's some uh, optical toys, I guess optical illusions that function as toys. Oh, here we here we have a peep show. Let's uh, see what there is to see at the peep show. These clowns inviting children to look in the hole there. Let's see uh, see what's going on in that peep show. Oh, yeah, I've talked about my love of Viewmasters. That was a big part of my childhood there. Take these discs here, put them in the Viewmaster, and you can see a 3D, uh, 3D view. And I never had the talking Viewmaster that actually could tell the story along with the visuals. Oh, it looks here. I can actually turn the, turn the crank. Oh, wow. I think this is uh, this is fun. It's like an airplane, a Barbie airplane that like folds out and uh, actually sit in the seat. Look out the window there. Oh man, look at Ken. Oh, this is something I've never heard of. This is Baby Naga. Says the U.S. rubber company of Naugatuck, Connecticut, created Naga High, the first rubber-based artificial leather, and they actually sold this as their mascot, the uh, baby Naga. Yeah, since they made Naga hide chairs, but also sold the Naga hide baby Naga. Some paper dolls there, where you could like switch out their clothes. Yeah, they come with the naked doll and all the different clothes that you can clip onto their body. So an absolutely amazing and very thorough toy museum. Only thing is, I don't know, I can't believe I'm saying this. I did not see, I did not see a single Cupid in here. Wow. No, no Billikens either. <laughs> Didn't see any Billikens. And as we exit through the gift shop here, you can actually purchase your own little miniatures. Some miniature rooms there. Little miniature, uh, miniature greenhouse. They also have miniature crayons, miniature colored pencils, and little miniature animals as these are for good luck. So you don't know, should I get a little miniature flamingo to grant me good luck on my trip? I don't know, I'm afraid I would lose him. All right, are you guys all buckled up and uh, ready to head out? So 
come down here to downtown Kansas City, Missouri. I was actually looking for a certain restaurant to eat some lunch at. That brings us to the Crown Center, which is this mall here with some very, very blue fountains. I don't know, is the fountains always blue or is this celebrating some sort of blue holiday? If they were green, I would assume they were celebrating St. Patrick's Day, but I'm not sure. Maybe they're just always blue like that. Anyways, let's head inside. And check this out. I didn't even know about this. It says, Journey to Oz, a free exhibit. So a exhibit on the Wizard of Oz. Now we're not in Kansas, but we're very, very close to Kansas. Is the, uh, the, the Kansas-Missouri state line kind of runs through the city here. This is where I was planning on eating. Looks like there's quite a line to get in, but I think we'll uh, stick it out. This is Fritz's. You can see the sign there. They actually deliver your food by train. You can see the little, uh, is that a raccoon there in the train? All right, so the dining room here shaped like a train car. You can see over here is actual window seats where you can uh, watch, I guess, watch miniature trains go by. Oh, look at this, here it comes. Okay, so that train just dropped off the food over there, now it's lowering on a conveyor belt. Look at that. All right, so here's how it works here. You got a menu, you order off the menu, but to place your order, you have to use this telephone here to call in your order, and then your food will be delivered by train. So it looks like it's mostly sandwiches, hot dogs, and burgers here. I think I'm gonna go for the uh, Freddy Burger, which is a, I guess they say like, like a chili burger. All right, let's see how this, see how this goes. Press the button here. Hello. Uh, yes, can I get a, um, can I get a Diet Coke and a uh, double Freddy Burger? Uh, I think that'll be it. Appreciate it, thank you. All right, we'll see if uh, a train uh, brings that by at some point. Oh, you can see a model train passing through the windows there. <laughs> well, here's some food coming. Is it mine? Is it mine? Oh. Is it mine? It is mine. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right. All right, we take our food there off of the... Uh, off of the elevator there. Wow. That was a lot of fun. Alright, so let's unveil our chili burger here. I did not get any fries, just the burger. But, uh, there you go, got a sesame seed bun and lots of chili there. Alright, looks pretty good. Let's uh, see how this tastes. Chili burger up here. I can hear the train whistles blowing. A lot of chili on there. Mm. Some good chili there. And you know what? I hear food is better when it's delivered by train. Mm. Mustard. And at eleven dollars and twenty-seven cents, one of the uh, one of the cheapest meals I've had as of late. Yeah. 
So here is the current free exhibit here at Crown Center it's called a Journey to Oz. All right, so I guess we start out here at uh, Dorothy's house. It's kind of slanted in there. But look at this, we have already landed in Oz. There's Glinda the Good Witch and the uh, Wicked Witch of the East has been crushed. And we are now welcomed to the Munchkin City. Of course, there's only one way to head out of Munchkin Land is that, of course, the yellow brick road. Oh, a Munchkin playing the fiddle there. First, meet some friends along the way. Mr. Scarecrow, the Tin Woodsman, and the uh, Cowardly Lion, but looks like he's already gotten his uh, Medal of Courage there. The Emerald City here. See the, uh, the doorkeeper there letting us in. Now here with the operating system behind the Wizard of Oz. I guess this is where the, uh, the man behind the curtain operates the uh, the great and powerful Oz. All right, then we gotta head into the witch's castle. You're gonna watch your head. Oh, it's spooky in here. Uh-oh, it's the flying monkeys have shown up. Oh, well, these flying monkeys look, they look awfully happy as far as uh, flying monkeys go. And as we turn in the corner here, we are confronted by Margaret Hamilton, the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, look at that. Have the witch's, the witch's broom. <laughs> My greenies! <laughs> I'll get you, Dorothy. at the castle into the haunted forest here. But all is good. We have reached the end of the Yellow Brick Road and me and Dorothy are going back to Kansas. Fortunately, Kansas is only about 10 minutes from here, so we're, we're in a good place. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And we have landed here in Lawrence, Kansas. See that albino jackalope watching us from that window up there. And this is what I wanted to check out here in Lawrence, Wonder Fair. This is a art supply store with a uh, haunted bathroom. Now I stopped in here um, a couple years back wanting to see the haunted bathroom. Um, sadly, the haunted bathroom was closed due to the pandemic. So uh, I am on good authority that the haunted bathroom is back open. So let's head in and uh, check out Wonder Fair, the delightful little ship there on the, uh, on the outside. It's a window display. You see uh, snow being fired skyward. Apparently this is the world's only snow -cano. I guess it's like a volcano, but instead of lava, it spews snow. We're gonna head in, but we gotta be careful that Dave the cat does not uh, slip past our feet. And apparently Dave the cat is uh, very popular. You can buy your own Dave the cat t-shirt. I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, so uh, here it is. The Wonderfair's famous haunted bathroom here. See, warning to our visitors, the bathroom is purported to be haunted. Shop owners give no responsibility for the actions of spirits or ghosts of this premises. Be warned. So it says this was featured on sightings. Oh man, I loved sightings. It was a show on Fox about aliens in the 90s. Unsolved Mysteries, another great show about the unknown. 
80s ghost hunters, internet blogs, and the local news. It was nominated Best Public Restroom in Lawrence, and it was seen on my favorite website, Roadside America. So, yeah, we have the final resting room here. Let's head inside. Oh, it's got kind of a spooky, a spooky blueness to everything. Let's see. Oh, see that flashing? That light was just pulsating. Got the uh, radio there. Okay. We're supposed to remain seated at all times. We're supposed to sit sit on the on the toilet there. Um, what kind of books do we have? So bathroom. Like, oh. Okay, that's a little uneasy in here. Guide to communicating with the spirits. Yeah. Oh, the radio station keeps changing by itself. The clock there ticking. What is it? Wait a minute, what's that say? Don't, what? It, look, wait, I'll look in the mirror. It says, what's that say? Don't forget a souvenir for your friends. You get a souvenir for our friends here in the haunted, haunted bathroom. Oh, okay. Here's the, uh, here's the souvenirs. There's a, get a postcard. The haunted bathroom at night where it's all dark. There is a uh, haunted bathroom amulet, haunted bath haunted bathroom matches, some soap, some haunted bathroom toilet paper. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good souvenir there. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely one of the spookiest, spookiest bathrooms I've ever, uh, I've ever been in. Yeah, look at that picture. The ghost there. Wait, I'm afraid I'm going to jump scare here. Okay, that seems normal. It's like... Toothbrush there, an eyedropper. All right. Guess uh, I've seen I've seen some definite sightings of you know possible strange noises, strange music in here. I don't know. What do you guys do you think? Do you think the haunted bathroom is indeed haunted? So obviously, I'm not going to film myself using the facilities here, but I think we'll maybe take a seat here on the edge of the toilet and uh, oh, I can hear voices coming from, coming from that radio. You guys heard that right? Oh, okay, the light flickered there. Definitely the spookiest place I have ever uh, I've ever used the facilities. All right, it assures us that we're not trapped, or are we? Pull hard here. And I guess we officially survived Wonderfair's famous haunted bathroom. It has been a very long time since I've seen film being sold in stores. There's a disposable camera there. I wonder if you got these pictures taken. I wonder where you would go to even to even get uh, get these developed. Oh this one says it has grungy character and muted colors. Interesting. Yeah different okay yeah there's different disposable cameras with different uh, different styles. That's really cool. And here's a souvenir from the haunted bathroom. You get your very own haunted bathroom slime. Ooh, bathroom slime. That sounds gross. Your souvenir amulets from the haunted bathroom. This little cat picture in the bathroom. This little spooky toilet with a, like a ghoulie crawling out of it. There's the uh, the toilet seat clock on the wall. Some more haunted bathroom merch. See a little model there of the haunted bathroom. Oh, it looks like there's a little ghost cat. That makes sense. There's a little ghost cat on the wall there. Oh, you can see that. This postcard, you make the cat open and close its eyes. 
some of the haunted bathroom souvenir toilet paper. Little postcard there of a skeleton on the toilet. And then you can pretend like you're drinking toilet water out of uh, out of that. I don't know. Am I ready to start putting bumper stickers on my new car? What do you guys think? These pennants here, and these are cool. These collages of the different cities in Kansas. You got Topeka, Wichita there. It's Kansas City where we just left, and Manhattan, Kansas. And look at this. It has Johnny Johnny Caw, who's kind of like the Kansas version of Paul Bunyan. Look at Dave the cat. Has his very own, uh, very own calendar. I didn't. I haven't seen Dave. He might be hiding somewhere. All right, so let's do this. Um, I I don't think I've ever put a bumper sticker on my car before. Um, you're supposed to put them, I guess, down here. Uh, I don't know. Is that like? I'm afraid to cover that up. Is that like a, a sensor? Or so that might be a sensor. Uh, so maybe we'll put it right, right here. And that'll leave room to maybe someday get a uh, second bumper sticker over here. All right. So this will probably avoid the warranty on my car, but you know what? We're just gonna. We're just going to go for it here. There you go. Just wait until you use the haunted bathroom at Wonder Fair in Lawrence, Kansas. All right, first ever bumper sticker. We have landed here in Manhattan, Manhattan, Kansas. But I did not want to drive through Kansas without stopping and saying hello to Johnny Caw. Johnny Caw, king of the straw. The uh, Kansas version of Paul Bunyan here, standing in a public park here in Manhattan, Kansas. You can see he is a giant like Paul Bunyan, instead of an ax, he has a seat. Because instead of a lumberjack, he is a wheat farmer. The giant wheat farmer here in Kansas. And you can see here encircling Johnny Caw, we have uh, kind of the story of how he came to be. He was birthed in 1955 by a Kansas State University professor, George Fillinger, who wrote the story of Johnny Caw. It appeared in the local newspaper, would later become part of a book. Over here, it talks about some of Johnny Caw's amazing deeds. It says that he actually created the sunflower, which is Kansas's state flower. It says he actually collected the beams of the sun and uh, soaked flower seeds in the pure sunlight and grew a flower that was taller than him, which became the sunflower. But it does not stop there. In addition to creating the sunflower, he also named the hot dog. I guess it had no name before he first ate it. And said when he bit into it, he exclaimed, hot doggy. He was so excited. And from that, they named it the hot dog. Also says that uh, he named the catfish because his pet wildcat Bob would uh, would catch the fish, and therefore a cat caught the fish, so they decided to name it the catfish. Yeah, it's uh, his wildcat Bob and his pet, the Jayhawk, uh, you know, kind of his two animal companions, like Paul Bunyan has Babe. Amongst his other great deeds, he, uh, dra he dragged his wheat scythe behind him for the valleys of Flint Hills and the bed of the Kansas River says that uh, he would reach up and squeeze, squeeze rain clouds to help the farmers squeeze the rain onto the crops and protect the farms from the dreaded Kansas tornadoes by chopping them in half with his scythe. 
yeah, let's spread some Johnny Caw awareness. We have, uh, most of us have heard of Paul Bunyan. Most of us have heard of Pecos Bill and uh, John Henry. But I don't know if as many people have heard of uh, Johnny Caw. He's kind of a, uh, kind of a, uh, I don't want to say B-level folk hero, but not as, not as popular as Paul Bunyan. I'd put him up there with, uh, I think the equivalent would be Joe Magnarak, the, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania steel worker, the giant Pennsylvania steel worker. You have kind of these giant occupations. Joe Magnarak, the giant steel worker. Johnny Caw, the giant wheat farmer. Paul Bunyan, the giant lumberjack. But uh, yeah, everyone out there, show, uh, show Johnny Caw some love. And when you're passing through Kansas, stop by here in Manhattan and pay your respects to Johnny Caw, king of the straw. And we have landed in the great state of Colorado. More specifically, colorful Colorado. So I still got a little ways to drive. I still got about, um, gosh, I think I got about four and a half hours to drive. Um, Jen and Anna are staying at a hotel in uh, the town that my sister lives in. So I'm gonna be coming in late. I'm gonna leave the key out for me. I'm gonna hide the key in the parking lot so I can let myself in and go to sleep. Probably not gonna be until probably about 4 a.m. that I get there. But uh, I've successfully made it to the, the state, the state of Colorado. I just need to, Colorado's a big state, so it's gonna take a little while to get there. I'm gonna be spending some time with some family the next couple days. I'm um, very excited, very excited about that. Like I said, my I have a new uh, new nephew that uh, that I need to meet, and um, of course my mom's here, my stepdad's here, my uh, my niece, my sister, my uh, my brother-in-law, Annabelle's here, Jen's here. So a lot of family to spend time with, and um, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to take a day or two off. Or I may film anyways. Uh, we'll just see. I'm going to play it by ear. But definitely going to have some uh, some downtime with the family while I'm here. Kind of the reason I came out here. But uh, stay tuned because I do have some plans. If everything goes according to plan, I'm going to do some have some fun things to do here in, uh, in Colorado as well. And then after we leave Colorado, stay tuned because I have yet another destination that I'll be racing to. That seems what this... Uh, this last month has been has been me racing to destinations, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one to bed for now. I'm going to uh, drive the rest of the way and uh, get to hopefully get a little bit of rest. And tomorrow I'll spend tomorrow with uh, with family. But stay tuned. I will see you guys very very soon. Don't uh, don't think I'm about to vanish here. But uh, appreciate it. if you guys like these videos. Of course, please subscribe travel around the country, film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider, consider, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, doing personalized messages on Cameo. It reminds me, I might need to go do some cameos in the car right now. I need to go check that. Thanks for reminding me. Of course, all those things help keep this train in the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, from colorful Colorado, this one's in the bag. Oh yeah, and no sleeping in the car. You guys gotta stay awake and keep me company.